In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you can make an HTTP request in Node.js. So there are a few ways that you can make an HTTP request in Node.js and we're going to be looking at how you can do this with the built-in Node.js libraries, which is probably the more complicated way of doing it, and we'll also look at how you can use third-party NPM packages to handle all the heavy lifting for you. So if we don't want to use any third-party packages, we can use the HTTP or HTTPS library that is provided by Node. which provides us, amongst other things, the ability to make a GET request. And the GET request takes two parameters. The first is the URL that we want to retrieve, and the second is the function that is going to handle the request when it's in progress. So the function inside of our GET request is actually a good example of how Node.js uses an event-driven system to handle data that's coming from an external source. So what we actually need to do is create a new variable and we're just going to use this to save the data that comes in from our request. And on our response object, which is inside our function, we're just going to set up a listener for when we receive a data event. And when we receive a data event, we can ha have a function to actually handle that. And on each bit of data that we receive, we can store that into a variable called chunk. And then that chunk of data will just keep appending into our existing data variable. So as the data from the network request flows in, we'll get those individual chunks of data and we'll save them into that variable. We'll also set up another event so that when the network request finishes, we can perform some action. And for this example, we're just going to log the data to the console. And we might want to add a little bit of error handling here in case there are any problems retrieving the data. And this listener that we set up is actually part of the chain of the get request, so it's not actually inside of the function that we've just created. We actually just add it onto the chain of the get request. So if we go ahead and run that now, you can see in our console we get the output of the data or the HTML page that's at that URL. So as I said, this is probably the more complicated way of doing it and you need to set up event listeners for all of the events that happen in the network request. And it can get a fair bit more complicated if you want to do a different type of request like a post or put. So if you're doing anything more complicated than retrieving data from a URL, you might want to actually use a third party library. And for this tutorial, I'm going to use the Axios library. So once we've installed Axios as a dependency of our project, you'll see it listed in our dependencies here in our package.json. And if we go back to our server.js file and we'll just remove what we had before. And this time I'm going to require the Axios library. And this time it's simply a case of saying axios.get and the URL that we want to retrieve. And by default Axios returns a promise for us so we can then use the then function that's available to us which will be when the promise resolves with the data that's been retrieved from the URL. And also we can catch any errors with a catch function, which will have the same effect as the previous example that we set up. So we can just run that again in the console. And we pretty much get the same output. However, Axios provides us with a lot of other information about the actual request that's completed. So if you just want the data that's been returned from the URL, we can simply access the data property on the result. So there are plenty of other third-party NPM packages that you can use to send network requests, each with their own pros and cons. But Axios is generally considered one of the standard libraries to choose for this purpose. So there you have a couple of ways to make an HTTP request in Node.js.